Welcome to the Military Money Manual Podcast. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Military Money Manual Podcast. I'm the founder of MilitaryMoneyManual.com, Spencer, and join today, as I am every week, with my good friend, Jamie. Jamie, how are you doing Hello. today? Doing well, doing well. Good. So today on the podcast, we're talking about the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. My main takeaway for these two cards is if you're going to get a card in the military, uh, and it's going to be annual fee waived like the MX Platinum or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, as we'll get into, this is going to be one of those cards I'm going to recommend. So if you're brand new to the travel hacking game, and let's say you've heard about the MX Platinum fee waiver, go ahead, open up an MX Platinum, you know, join the cool kids club. Everybody at your unit probably has one of those cool metal MX Platinum cards. Yep. But <laughs> honestly, the Chase Sapphire Reserve is a contender. I mean, it is arguably a lot of people could say that the Chase Sapphire Reserve is even a better card than the MX Platinum. A little controversial, I know. Yeah, but scandalous tonight here on the podcast. That's right. Hot takes, hot takes all day. <laughs> So today, um, we're going to get into just some of the details on the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and we'll differentiate between those two cards. We'll talk about some of the annual fees, which you don't have to worry about if you're in the military, and we'll talk about how to get those annual fees waived. Uh, We'll talk about Chase Ultimate rewards points, how Jamie and I value them, and how you can think about them, what you can use them for. Because I think that's, especially if you're new to the game, you know, you see these like 100,000 point welcome bonuses and you're like, well, what does that get me? You know, can I just get a tote bag from NPR or what am I actually getting with that? And then we'll talk about kind of like our thought process of, you know, which one should you open and can you get both of them? And we'll, we'll get into all those details. So we'll start off with Chase 5 out of 24. So we'll just, Jamie, do you want to briefly walk us through what the Chase 5 out of 24 rule is? Yeah, absolutely. So like we said before, Chase is a a little bit more uh, stringent on how many cards you can have open with them. It's commonly referred to as the five out of 24, like like you said, Spencer. And that means you can open no more than five cards in the the previous 24 months. Uh, And that's with any bank, not just Chase. They will not allow you to get another Chase card if you already have all those spots filled. And that's based off the date of account opening. it's it, it basically is the date you apply and are approved for the card is is the best way to do that. So within 24 months of of that, you use up five spots and you cannot get another card until the oldest one drops off 25 months later. Basically, um, there's some tricks about that. We've talked about that in, in previous episodes of you know waiting an extra month or two to make sure that it fully falls off and and you can get in with your next cards. So that's kind of an overview of the five out of 24 rule that Chase has. Another thing uh, that you should know about the the Chase Sapphire cards is there's th- there's three tiers of them. So the highest tier is known as the Chase Sapphire Reserve, or you'll might hear us refer to it as the CSR, which I think is the same number of syllables anyway, so it doesn't save that much time. But Sounds cooler. The C- yeah, Don't the judge CSR me. is a five hundred fifty dollar annual fee. CSR normally Chase Sapphire, and that's <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one less. It's one less. One less. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's a so like I was saying that's a five hundred fifty dollars annual fee, but that annual fee is completely waived for military spouses and active duty military service members or guard and reserve on Title Ten orders of thirty days or more. And the best way to check that is just Google uh, MLA database, and you can look up to see if you're in the MLA database. Uh, it's especially relevant if you're a military spouse because sometimes when they put you in the deers, they forget to put your social security number in or Maybe if you're a uh, foreigner and you picked up a social security number later in life and you weren't born with one, then it might be a little bit trickier to make sure that you're in the MLA database. Or new to active and, duty too. Or that's that's also true. Yeah. So yeah. if you've just commissioned or you just enlisted, probably want to give it a few months and just double check the MLA database before you go ahead and apply for any of these cards. So we talked about Chase Sapphire Reserves top tier. Chase Sapphire Preferred is their mid tier. That's $95 annual uh, annual fee again, completely waived for military military spouses, and then the bottom tier card, which not a lot of people talk about because it's not that great, is the uh, the Chase Sapphire <laughs> card, and it's just it's just Chase Sapphire. There's no uh, preferred, there's no reserve on the end. It's just a vanilla Chase Sapphire card, uh, and we're not even going to talk about that one today because it's not even really worth your time. Yeah. So we will talk about though um, the Sapphire family. When we refer to that, we're talking about 
really what we're talking about is the top tier Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And you might be asking, well, if the annual fees are waived, why would I even look at the Chase Sapphire Preferred? And we'll get to that in just a second. But one thing to note before we get into this is if you've had a Chase Sapphire bonus, so you've received a welcome bonus or a sign-up bonus in the last 48 months from a Sapphire product, you are not eligible for another Sapphire product. So I actually had this exact scenario uh, come up recently, Jamie, where I applied for the Chase Sapphire Reserve in 2017. I can't remember what month it was, probably summer, but it was in 2017. I applied for the Chase Sapphire Reserve when they were offering a 100,000 point bonus. And I was approved and I got the 100,000 points and I had a Chase Sapphire Reserve for years. And, but this was also before the annual fees were waived for active duty. So I was paying at the time, it was a $450 annual fee on the card. And it was worth it to me because as we'll get into it, this card has a lot of benefits. And I think even for civilians, it justifies the annual fee if you do any kind of traveling. So I opened the card in 2017 and then I closed the card in 2000. I think it was in 2019. And the my my wife opened up her Chase Sapphire Reserve because of the new MLA rules. Her annual fees were waived. So now we, and then she added me as an authorized user. So now our family has a Chase Sapphire Reserve card. I don't have any Chase Sapphire cards, but the last time I got the bonus was in 2017. Well, 2021, Chase Sapphire Preferred comes out with another 100,000 point bonus. That was uh, earlier this year in 2021. The current bonus you can find on my website. If you go to militarymoneymanual.com, they change all the time, but it's not current. As of the recording of this podcast, it's not offering 100,000 points anymore. Anyways, long story long, I because (laughs) because I'd opened up the card in 2017 and then closed it, I did not have any Chase Sapphire products under my name. And it had been 48 months since I had had gotten a bonus. Actually, it had been more than that. It had been like 50 or 52 months. And therefore, I was eligible for another Chase Sapphire. family bonus. So I, I applied for the Chase Sapphire Preferred in 2021 and I was approved, annual fees waived, and I earned another 100,000 points. So there's a there's just a personal example of the 48-month rule. That's another one of those Chase gotchas. Um, and then the, the final one that I'll add is the... Uh, actually, do you want to take it, Jamie? It's the um, Chase Sapphire family rule. So you can... How many Chase Sapphires, I guess, can you can you apply for and be be approved for at a time? Yeah. So the the Ch- the Chase Sapphire makes it difficult. You pretty much can only have one at a time, um, except for upgrading. So the only way to get multiple ones. Um, so let me just recap real quick what Spencer was talking about with the sign up bonus. In order to get another Sapphire bonus from the Sapphire family, you you cannot have any Sapphire product open and you cannot have received a bonus for a Sapphire product in the last 48 months. If those are met, you like you close your card for whatever situation like Spencer talked about, you can do it. The only other way, the only way to have multiple products, not talking about welcome bonus, but just having multiple Chase Sapphire Reserve or preferred cards is to then get a free card like the Chase Freedom or Freedom Flex, Freedom of Unlimited, one of those, and then upgrade after a year to the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So you can get multiple products eventually, but not multiple welcome bonuses uh, without dancing around a little bit. And then it becomes a little complicated to track. So we're going to do another uh, quick guide uh, later about how to upgrade. It's a a pretty uh, more advanced method of travel hacking, but is a really nice way to accumulate uh, a large stockpile of Amex Platinums or Chase Sapphire Reserve. and, And you multiply all those benefits like like your travel credits, your Uber credits, your airline credits, or whatever the card is offering when you have multiple of the same product available. Right. Yeah. Good points. Thanks for summarizing. So with the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the CSP, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, when you open the accounts, you're going to earn a welcome bonus. So as of the recording of this podcast, and again, this is all this is they change these welcome bonuses all the time. So check out my website, militarymoneymanual.com and uh, on the homepage there, you should find a link to the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, whichever you prefer. And you can go ahead and see what the, the, the latest welcome bonus is. But right now they're offering on the Sapphire Reserve, they're offering a 50,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards welcome bonus after you spend $4,000 in the first three months of opening the card. 
So Jamie, 50,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points. Sounds like a lot. Is it worth anything? What can you do with those points? Chase points are, are pretty valuable in general. I would value them. Uh, I think you as well agree with two cents per point for Chase Ultimate Rewards. They have a number of travel partners you can transfer to, which are great. Some, some of the sweet spots of redemptions are international airline travel partners that you can transfer to. Um, and if you're lazy and just want to make it easy, you can redeem from the Chase Travel Portal for 1.5 cents per point. So it's like a little 50% bonus there. Um, of course you can get like gift cards and use them on Amazon and crap your redemptions like that. So we would encourage you to try to get two cents per point at a minimum through the chase travel portal. You can get 1.5 cents per point. So it's a $750, uh, value there through the chase travel portal. Yeah. We have a, uh, good friend who, uh, will remain named Brad and, uh, he frequently uses his Amex points for, Amazon purchases and uh, which is one of the worst uses. Of yeah. 0.7, points. Not even yeah, one point point seven. So less than one cent per point where you could just go book an airline or a hotel uh, through the Amex travel portal. At least you'd get one cent per point. So yeah. Brad, which we're really embarrassed. We're really embarrassed. To <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, him. which you, which we know you're not start, start listening, <laughs> man. And take my course, military slash UMC three. <laughs> Great point. Yeah, the, the course is, a, you know, uh, we talked about before, but just a really good summary and building a strategy, how to redeem points, how to use points, how to look at re- redemption options. And that is free. It's a five day series of emails. Spencer will send you no spam or anything. You can un- unsubscribe anytime. And it's militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. Like you said, highly recommend that if you have not gone through that yet. I'm a, a graduate of the program as well. Yeah, thanks for. I think you were one of the first beta testers on that. So thanks, Jamie. Uh, so you, you were saying, yeah, you, you always are. So um, so fifty thousand Chase Ultimate Reward Points. So if you're valuing those at two cents per point, I mean that's um, that's a thousand point bonus right there, just for uh, signing up for the card and, and meeting the minimum spend. Now again, we always you know encourage people if if you can't naturally meet that minimum spend, then find a card that you can. Or, and just wait until your, you know, your lifestyle inflation and lifestyle creep kind of catches up and that you can meet that minimum spend naturally. And whether it's on groceries or gas or, or rent or, or whatever, you know, there's lots of ways to, to meet those minimum spends. The other things uh, that we'll, we'll, we'll talk specifically now about the Chase Sapphire Reserve it comes with a whole heap of benefits. And I think one of the biggest ones that you and I both agree on, Jamie, is the $300 annual travel credit. So is this like the Amex one where it's like not that flexible? Or is this like probably one of the best deals ever on a credit card? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with uh, B, please, Alex. Uh, right. it's, it is very loose travel credit. It covers gas, hotels, uh, airline tickets, any kind of travel related expenses. It's not limited to airline incidental fees like the Amex Platinum benefit is. So that's what this is one of the main reasons why people value this card so highly is because it's just three hundred free dollars. You you will spend three hundred dollars a year on gas or Uber fares or any kind of travel related expenses. So you will guarantee to get at least three hundred back. I will caveat the ga- the gas thing. I think that's just until the end of twenty twenty one. Um, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. I'm you're not probably sure right if on they that. Made, but I'm not sure if they made yeah. gas permanent yet. But they, they transit might, tickets, you know? any you know, but yeah, uh, yeah, airfare, uh, tolls, taxis, Uber, basically, you know, hotels. I mean, if you go TDY, and um, you know, always use your GTC, obviously. But sometimes the GTC doesn't work, and um, you know, you can get three hundred dollars of uh, anytime you check into a hotel. You know, just use that to uh, to pay for your hotel, and then you're going to get three hundred dollars back. The other, another good point that we, I think we brought this up in another recent show about Amex versus uh, Visa acceptance worldwide. I think it's always a good idea to have a Visa card in your pocket. And the Chase Sapphire Reserve is a Visa card. So that's a, that's a big benefit there when you're traveling, especially internationally or you're stationed overseas. Uh, you're going to want to have a Visa card in your wallet just in case American Express is not accepted wherever you're traveling. Yeah. And on top of that, no foreign transaction fees with this card. So another good bonus there. Since we're talking about travel a little bit, I mean, this is definitely one of the ultra premium travel rewards card. I'm just going to run through some of the 
other benefits, travel uh, perks that the that the card has. And then I'll turn it over to you, Jamie, to uh, to talk about one of your favorite uh, features of the car with the, the rental car coverage. Okay. But um, just like we talked about, kind of in the uh, if you listen to the best hotel uh, best uh, hotel credit cards for military service members episode we mentioned the hundred dollar global entry or tsa pre-check credit that's a great one make sure you sign up for global entry if you're active duty even if you're a military spouse also sign up for global entry you know even if you just travel once internationally in the next five years it's you're going to come back through uh, u.s immigration you're going to appreciate that you get to skip the line and go and go to the front of the line with that global entry and it comes with tsa pre-check which i have noticed has probably saved me you know, even with a little bit of traveling I've done during COVID, it's probably saved me like 20 hours of waiting in TSA lines. So wow. the, yeah, the TSA, <laughs> the TSA I, it's, I'm serious. I mean, every time I could fly through Honolulu, um, not during COVID, but more recently, not the peak of COVID, but more recently, there's been maybe an app, looks like an hour long line. Yeah. That line, line. isn't, inc- that line gets yeah. crazy for sure. Yeah. A couple other things they have, uh, lost luggage coverage, uh, travel emergency assistance, Trip cancellation, trip interruption, trip delay. Make sure you check, kind of dig into the details of what's actually going to be covered. Um, it might make sense to purchase a like a USAA um, travel insurance policy because they they have a specific military clause in there. So if your leave is revoked for whatever reason, then you can you can get uh, your travel insurance paid out, and that's a pretty easy process. I know. Um, when I was like a lieutenant, I got sent on a, uh, a last minute TDY and it was, they, they took like the first captain in my chain of command and the first yeah. 03 and just signing a memorandum and they, they, they paid out. So that's a, um, the USA travel insurance, I think is a really good option. It's usually pretty cheap. I remember when I was lieutenant and a captain, I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks for like to, in, to insure a multi-thousand dollar trip. So that's a, uh, that's a really good option there. If you're, um, if you're not sure that your credit card uh, travel insurance is going to cover things. Uh, and then priority pass. So that's another really good one. Um, it's better than Amex's priority pass. It allows, I th- is it more guests and it's the, uh, mainly the restaurant. So the, the, oh, the priority pass through okay. chase has some locations in an airport where you can get usually something like $28 worth of food for you and a guest at a restaurant. Amex a couple years ago got rid of all the restaurants in the prior in their version of the priority pass benefit. So um, I'm not hundred percent sure if the guest policy is different, but for sure there's more options under priority pass. If you sign up through chase compared to Amex, but you don't get access to the Amex lounge through, through this card. That's why it's a good compliment to the Amex platinum, not we, you know, if you're only going to do two cards, these are the two cards to get Amex Platinum and Chase Sapphire Reserve. Yeah, yeah, and then and then you're covering both of the the, the best travel, yeah. um, the, the most valuable points programs, the Chase Ultimate Rewards and the Amex Membership Rewards as well. When you uh, when you open up both of those cards, I think it's, I mean, it's a no brainer if you're in the military. Like everybody knows about the Amex Platinum, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, it should be a no brainer as well. Like yeah. everybody should know about the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Okay, uh, Jamie, uh, primary rental car coverage. Why is that? Why is that a big deal? And do, do you put all of your rental cars on your CSR? Yes, and everyone should. And I'll tell you why. So, primary rental car is different from secondary rental car insurance, which almost every other credit card, including the Amex Platinum, has secondary rental car coverage. What that means is if you're in an accident while you're renting a car, they're going to make you go to USAA or Geico or whatever else first, and then the credit card may cover the remainder of the bill for the to Hertz or Avis or whatever. With primary rental, rental car insurance like the Chase Sapphire Reserve has, you go to Chase first and make them pay and you don't have to make a claim on your USA or Geico auto insurance. We all know that the more claims you make, the more your policy has the potential to go up, right? So that's a nice benefit of USA or Chase never needs to know that someone dinged my car or you know whatever the case may be. Um, I don't know. Hopefully I'm not giving out legal advice. I, I don't consult no. with your to the terms of your policy just to be <laughs> yeah. sure but basically make sure you it, ring your yeah. attorney uh <laughs> it, it makes it makes sure that chase covers the bill and not your policy and minimizes the risk of your policy uh premium going up in the future uh, right. and it also puts it all on now it's avis and the credit card are dealing with it 
or you know hertz in the credit card you're not having to be the middleman between them and, and usaa um, there's also some differences here between international and domestic reservation. So keep in mind, again, dig into the terms and make sure you understand your benefits, but, uh, primary rental car insurance. I, I, I had a visitor one time visit us in Hawaii. And when we got to the budget counter, um, he, they said, do you want the car insurance? And he said, yes, they, it was like a four or five day reservation. The insurance added $945 <laughs> to a like two hundred and seventy dollar um, reservation, and so wow. if you you don't need to worry about the rental car insurance and some of the some of the, your USA and Geico, it may cover it, but it's not going to be the benefit of this. Again, is primary make Chase pick up the slack, not your USA or Geico uh, type primary auto insurance. The other good thing that I I caught this the other day when I was looking through the terms and conditions um, because that's what I do on a Friday night. But USAA oftentimes will not insure a rental car that's rented outside of the United States. And the, but a credit card like the Chase Sapphire Reserve will. So again, check the, uh, check what your, you know, rental um, or what your primary insurance, you know, the one that you just, your daily driver, USAA, Geico, Allstate, whoever it is check to see what kind of coverage they give for rental cars and then just double check to see what the uh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve or whatever credit card you're going to use. Another one, uh, I think that's doing primary, I'm pretty sure, let's see, Capital One. I think the new Capital One Venture X is doing primary. Why you're, it is. Yep. It is, okay. Yep. yep. So the Capital One Venture X, new card, not annual fee waived for military, but... Um, I I just opened it up recently and I'm pretty impressed by um so I'm I'm talking it up Capital One Venture X it's got 100,000 welcome points at the uh time we recorded this podcast and it's a uh it's a good card there so what about earning potential Spencer how do I how do I earn on this card uh, how many points am I going to get for spending yeah, so that's the other really good thing about having the Chase Sapphire Reserve in your pocket is because the Amex Platinum, while it comes with a ton of great benefits, it looks cool, it has, it's usually got a great welcome bonus, annual fees waived for military, it doesn't actually earn that many points in a lot of categories. Yeah, it's so, pretty weak. Yeah, so most categories, it's only 1x points, except for airfare, booked directly with the airline or through amextravel.com, it's 5x points. So that's where it kind of shines is you can get 5x points. And if you, you know, value an MX membership reward point at two cents per point, then you're kind of getting, you know, 5x times 2%. Well, you're, I mean, two cents, you're getting about 10% cash back or not cash back, but cash value um, of your points whenever you book an airline ticket to, you know, depending on how much you travel, or if you travel with a family, that can be really valuable. Yeah. But on the Chase Sapphire Reserve, it's got a lot better, uh, uh, bonus categories, earning categories. So they just increased this recently in 2021. Chase uh, Travel Portal, if you book a hotel or a rental car, you're going to get 10x points. Again, if you're valuing Chase points at two cents each, and sometimes I've gotten, you know, three, four, five cents for a Chase Sapphire or for a, a Chase Ultimate Reward Point when I transfer it to a travel partner. But if you're just, a, you know, a conservative two cents, 10x times two cents. I mean, you're getting 20% basically back from whatever you spend on a hotel or rental car that you book with the Chase Travel Portal. Now, I haven't done this. Um, it's not usually, I, I, usually you're not going to get the best deal through the travel portals. Yeah. On airfare, however, I have noticed that uh, at least through the Amex Travel Portal and the Capital One, and even the, actually, I, I have booked quite a bit of airfare through the Chase Travel Portal uh, using my, 1.5 cents uh, redemption for ultimate rewards points. The airfare is usually the same, or sometimes it's even cheaper than what you can find on like Google Flights or booking directly through the airline. And I know yeah. Amex has a program. I can't. It's a, is it called um, like preferred Amex, carrier? Yeah, uh, Amex preferred flights or something. Something uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but that one is uh, they even. I mean, they take like another ten percent off the, just the, the cash price off the top. I think you have to use points though to, usually to uh, to book it. Um, but yeah, so 10x hotels and rental cars that you book through Chase Travel Portal, 3x on airfare, which is uh, which is good, but not as good as the 5x you know that um, you can get in the Amex Platinum. 3x on dining, that's a big one. So yeah, you know, that's the good. Sapphire Reserve. If you're not going to use the Amex Gold Card, which is 4x in dining or dining, or if you're targeting Chase Ultimate Reward points and you don't 
care that much about Amex points, you're just not trying to accumulate Amex points at the moment, then 3x points on dining is great with the uh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And then 3x on all travel stuff, uh, like we talked about earlier, everything that falls into that travel bucket. So hotels, taxis, Ubers, trains, uh, all that stuff. And then anything you book through the Chase Travel Portal is going to get you 5x points. So um, then they, they usually throw in kind of um, just random annual benefits. So for 2021, they're doing Peloton. Any Peloton purchase, you get 10x points and $120 a year towards membership. So that's a, I mean, that's a great benefit right there. And usually they'll probably change it for something different for 2022 and 2023, but Chase Sapphire Reserve has, has consistently rolls out, you know, new benefits for their members to, to kind of juice it up. And um, yeah. And just give, give something back to the, to the, uh, their card holders, which as a military service member or a spouse, you're not paying any annual fees. So Say thank you. And, All gravy. <laughs> yeah. And just enjoy the ride. And don't be surprised when, uh, I think that's what, an episode that we should do one day is, you know, I would not be surprised if, if MLA and SCRA benefits go away one day. I think it's, it is, it's a, it's a hell of a deal. And, you know, Amex alone is probably losing $100 million a year just in annual Yeah, but they're fees. still posting billions of dollars a quarter. You think they even know it? Like, do you think anyone even cares? I don't know. Someone. There's some There's some accountants in some department at these at these credit card companies that is doing the numbers and is saying- They're making Ooh. so much money off of us still. I mean, even you think about yeah. the, what they pay per swipe, even if they're paying, most, most people are not taking full advantage of the benefits- you know, like I said, they're posting billions of dollars of profit a quarter. I don't think they care that much, but you're right. You, it, it's always a possibility, but okay. So obviously we love the chase Sapphire reserve. It's a great card. Like we said, we went through all the benefits. The next kind of tier down that we talked about or, or we introduced earlier is a chase Sapphire preferred and Spencer, when would someone want to target the preferred first? What would be a scenario where the preferred might be a better option or at least initially so if you are serious about the travel hacking game and you're not just getting into it for the immediate benefits, but you're, you're, you you want to play the long game, I would I almost always recommend the Chase Sapphire Prefer to people instead of the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And a lot of times I get blank looks and people are like, well, why would I do that? And But the reason is usually the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the CSP, is offering offers a higher welcome bonus than the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the CSR. So at the time of this recording, the CSP is offering 60,000 point, 60, points, which is 20% more than the CSR's 50,000 points. So it comes down to really how do you value the points? And you know, if, if 10,000 ultimate reward points, if you kind of look at it and you think, uh, I don't know, you know, if you value points at two cents per point, then you know, 10,000 ultimate reward points is really only worth $200. But if I open up a Chase Sapphire Reserve, the first year I get a $300 annual travel credit. So why would I give up that $300 annual travel credit? So that's kind of the calculation you have to make is, is the $300 annual travel credit worth more to you or is the $10,000 extra points? Sometimes it is a much bigger gap between the two. We've seen the Chase Sapphire Reserve be 60,000 and the Chase Sapphire Preferred be 100,000. So if you're comparing a 40,000 point difference compared to a $300 travel credit, those are the ones where you got to kind of figure out, am I, do I have a redemption coming up where I really want the 40,000 extra points or do I want $300 of basically cash immediately? Exactly, yeah. So I know for myself personally, once you get... Once you kind of go down the, especially with Chase, because you're locked out of Chase cards at after um, after you hit your five out of twenty four, you're locked out of Chase cards for you know almost two years since you opened the last one. And once you've kind of hit the the reserves and the freedoms, um, you can move on to business cards, but you kind of run out of options pretty quickly to generate yep. Chase ultimate reward points just through sign up bonuses. And you realize pretty quickly that that is the be all end all to this travel hacking game is signing up for the cards and earning the welcome bonuses. I mean, that is the fastest way to earn a ton of points. And if once that option's cut off from you and you can't earn more points that way, it's kind of a it, it can slow down a lot unless you're doing a lot of spending in some of the bonus categories. For sure. It gets a lot less exciting for a little bit. That's where uh, my wife and I are kind of right now. We, we've kind of maxed out for a little bit. So we're in the plateau of 
we don't really have any other welcome bonuses or anything we can do right now. We're both in a MX jail, so we're just kind of chilling, stabilizing, and hopefully, you know, in a couple months, we'll be able to apply for another card or two. Some of the other um, benefits on the Chase Sapphire uh, Preferred is they have a new benefit that includes a $50 annual uh, hotel credit. Um, when, and I'm pretty sure, uh, Spencer, correct me if I'm wrong, that has to be booked through the Chase Travel Portal to get that $50 hotel credit. Is that right? Yeah, which which yeah. in my mind kind of reduces the credit a little bit because yeah. it's just it just it's just one more layer. But it is it I, is there. I hardly ever book hotels through a travel portal. I find, you know, any any time you have to change it or or cancel it, you know, we I've done we've done some fine hotel and resorts through the Amex travel portal. But whenever you introduce a middleman, like a basically a travel agent is what it is, it's yeah. very, it's a lot harder to change it or or update anything on your reservation. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So you really want to get value out of it if you're going to book through a travel portal versus direct you know some big big redemption or earning or or other benefit right um so i'll just run through the other benefits real quick 5x uh points on travel book through the chase ultimate rewards travel portal 3x points on dining so same as the chase sapphire reserve and that includes takeout and delivery dining just like on the csr 2x points in all our travel purchases. So, so you're not really going to earn that many points with this card, unlike the Chase Sapphire Reserve. But there are a couple nice features. Um, you can use the pay yourself back feature. So points can just go back to your statement for 1.25 cents each, which is a good way if you have a ton of points and you want to pay off some charges for in it. Basically, you know, it's putting cash back in your pocket. No foreign transaction fees too. So if you're going TDY, you're PCSing, you're Oconus, uh, great card to have in the wallet. Uh, again, it's a visa, so you don't have to worry about the Amex problems. It also has primary rental car insurance, which is pretty good on a $95 annual fee card. But again, that fee is completely waived for military service members. So um, some of the temporary 2021 benefits were uh, they had unlimited deliveries with a $0 delivery fee, and they reduced service fees on order over $12 for one year with uh, Dash Pass, which is um, DoorDash. It's one of those you know, home delivery services. Uh, I don't think I ever activated that one. I think in Hawaii. We, yeah, we did. Yeah, you've used yeah. it. Yeah. So I actually, I just, uh, I canceled canceled mine, my, my like free trial for 12 months and then applied uh, my wife's. So now we get, you know, 11 more months, another, the yeah, remainder for a benefit. Yep. Uh, so, it, I mean, it's like, okay, if, if you're going to do DoorDash, it saves you five bucks for a delivery fee or whatever. It's, yeah. If you're going to use it, it's cool. It's not the end of the world if you don't have it. Right. Yep. So, and then finally, um, you can upgrade the Chase Sapphire Preferred to a Chase Sapphire Reserve after one year. And that one year limitation, a lot, I, I do get a lot of questions about this, so I want to address it. The one year limitation is because of the US Card Act. You can Google this. It was a law passed, I think, 2000 nine or 2008 kind of like right around the the global financial crisis uh the congress clamped down on a lot of the uh practices that credit card companies were doing at the time and one of them was moving people from a no annual fee card to a annual fee card within like right after they applied uh so this is one of the fallouts of that is because the chase sapphire reserve charges a higher annual fee Chase cannot upgrade you per the law uh, until you've hit one year. And that's it's kind of a loose one year. I know with like Amex, I've been able to upgrade Amex green cards, Amex platinum cards in like about like 11 months or so. Uh, sometimes I've even heard data points of like 10 months. So it might not be exactly a year, but if you wait a year, then you can, um, you can upgrade your Chase Sapphire Preferred to a Chase Sapphire Reserve. And now when you go to book uh, Ultimate Reward... So this is the primary difference here is... If you book through the travel portal with Chase Sapphire Preferred, you're going to get 1.25 cents per point. But if you book through the Chase Travel Portal with a Chase Sapphire Reserve, you're going to get 1.5 cents per point of value. So like for me, I've got a preferred card. My wife has a reserve card. Chase, unlike Amex, actually allows you to pool your points within yeah, a household, great. which is awesome. So I just move all my preferred points to her card, Chase Sapphire Reserve, and then we go and book our Delta or United tickets through uh, Chase Sapphire, through her Chase Sapphire Reserve account, and we get 1.5 cents. So we boost our um, our points value by like 25% there. So pretty, awesome. uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty awesome. Um, so Jamie, uh, if you were starting from square one, let's say you just 
listen, you know, you just found it. You just took the ultimate military credit cards course, militarymoneymanual.com slash UMC3. You're super stoked on military travel hacking. You're brand new or not maybe brand new, but you've been in the Air Force for a couple of years now. What are you thinking? Chase Sapphire Reserve or Chase, Sa- Chase Sapphire Preferred? So I'm going to go, of course, I'll give the textbook answer to the instructor first. It, <laughs> right. The point, the points All are the valuable. Above. Depending on it depends. Uh, the points are valuable right now. It's only ten thousand is the discrepancy between the two card sign up bonus. I personally would would tend towards getting the immediate three hundred dollar travel credit, but it just depends on your strategy. I think opening up the preferred first and maximizing your points and then upgrading after a year is a great answer. I think if you want to go straight to the reserve and get uh, a little bit better uh, earning on what you swipe it for and you get the $300 travel credit right away. That's also a great answer. Uh, I don't think you're going to go wrong. And either way, I haven't said this in a while, do something and you'll be okay. And you're going to take advantage of some of the great benefits chase has again. These are great cards. Either one, you're not going to go wrong with just be careful a little bit, you know, think about it a little bit because you can only do it once. It's not like you can cancel it. And, and a couple months later, change your mind. So it's going to take a, kind of a more long-term commitment to which one you choose, but either way, you're not going to lose out big time. Yeah. And my answer to that question would be, if I was starting all over again, I would go for the preferred. Uh, I would get the uh, the extra Chase Ultimate Reward points just because knowing what I know now of the value of the points, I would rather have... It, for some reason, it's just so much easier to book an airline ticket when you're paying for points than when you're paying for cash. So yeah. um, the $300 but annual you, travel credit is great. Yeah. And I, I would upgrade to a reserve and you know as soon as i hit my one year mark um but i just i know the way that my brain works the points it's easier for me to spend points than it is to spend dollars so yeah absolutely um so to recap what we talked about today the the if you're just starting out or you only have the amex platinum or everyone's always told you about the amex platinum the chase sapphire family either the reserve or the preferred is a great next card for you um, you got to kind of do it early in your strategy because of the limitations of the Chase 5 out of 24 rule. And um, if you haven't ventured into the Chase game, the Chase Sapphire Reserve is a great card. Chase Sapphire Preferred usually has a slightly higher sign-up bonus. So pay attention to those, venture out, and I think you'll be very happy with the Chase Ultimate Rewards redemption options, their travel partners, and and how they're valued when you go to redeem them. And as always, you can see the latest offers for these cards and any other cards we talk about on the podcast at militarymoneymanual.com. I'm Spencer, founder of the Military Money Manual and author of the new Military Money Manual book, which is available militarymoneymanual.com slash book. And if you're hearing this before Christmas, you still probably have time to uh, get it shipped to you or to a loved one before Christmas. So uh, check it out. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting some good reviews on Goodreads. I'm pretty stoked about it. And I uh, will say that it is coming to Amazon soon. So good. Awesome. Yeah, look for it. Uh, look for it there once you listen to this podcast. All right. Thanks for listening and see you later, Jamie. See ya. Hey, guys, it's Spencer again. Before I let you go, I want to let you know about my new book. It's called The Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom, and it's available right now at militarymoneymanual.com slash book. This is the book I wish someone had handed me on my first day in the military. In this book, I cover the exact money tactics, investing strategies I use on my path to financial independence before age 40. I break down the math of FI and I explain the exact dollar amounts you need to retire. The book is full of easy to apply financial advice specifically for military service members and their families. I cover tax-free deployments, the thrift savings plan, and many more topics only military personnel can relate to. This book was written specifically for you, whether you're active duty, guard, reserve, a military spouse, enlisted, or officer. Both E's and O's will benefit from the lessons in the Military Money Manual. If you're in the Army, Navy, or Air Force ROTC, or if you're a cadet or midshipman at West Point, Naval Academy, and the Air Force Academy, this is the perfect book to start your military career with. Again, the book is available right now at militarymoneymanual.com slash book, an audiobook, ebook, and my personal favorite, the hardcover book. The hardcover book was printed right here at home in the United States of America, and it will look great on your bookshelf. So check it out. Let me know what you think. And remember, podcast listeners can use promo code podcast to get a special discount. 
It's called the Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom. And it's available right now at militarymoneymanual.com slash book. Thanks for listening.